Greetings to you, my dear brothers and sisters. Once again, I'm grateful to God that uh, we can be able to share God's word on this platform. The other thing, this is the first Sunday in the month of October 2021. We are grateful to God who has journeyed with us for the past nine months during this year. We've passed the second wave and the third wave of the pandemic. And the goodness of the Lord has kept us and we are grateful to him. So today we will proceed with our series, which deal with bringing down the strongholds. Today, I want us to look at the third stronghold that you and me as children of God need to identify and bring down. Let us read together two texts this morning. But let me also remind you that I'm not going to read the anchor text. Our anchor text still remains 2 Corinthians 10 from verse 1 to verse number 5. But in order to save time, I'm not going to read the text today, but bear it in mind and come with me to Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18 and 19 where in the Good News Translation we read, Pride leads to destruction and arrogance to downfall. It is better to be humble and stay poor than be one of the arrogant and get a share of their loot. The second scripture that I want to read today is found in Isaiah chapter 14 and we will read from verse 12 to verse 15 and I will be reading from the NIV version where we read how have you fallen from heaven morning star son of the dawn you have been cast down to the earth you who once laid low the nations, you said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly on the utmost heights of Mount Zaphon. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. But you are brought down to the realm of the dead, to the depths of the pit. May the Lord bless the reading of uh, his word. The third stronghold that we as children of God must identify and destroy is called pride. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you once again that you are affording us this opportunity, Lord, to read your word and to allow ourselves to be led and be taught by your word. We submit to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Lead and guide us once again today. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Let me quickly refresh your mind. We didn't read our anchor text, which is 2 Corinthians 10, from verse five, 1 to verse number 5, where we find this concept of a stronghold 
when Paul refers to the stronghold that must be destroyed, it is a stronghold that is located in our thought patterns. It is embedded in our mindset. So it is not something out there that is easily identifiable or visible to the naked human eye but it is something that is in our thought just to sum up what i said in other words it is something in your thought patterns that creates a conduct in you which leads to you um moving away from God. In other words, it uh, undermines the word of God. It undermines God himself. So today we're going to be looking into that um, uh, pride. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you once again that you're going to lead and guide us Lord, we surrender to your leading and guidance in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we've read two scriptures today. The first one comes from Proverbs chapter 16, two verses, verse 18 and 19. We read something that you and I must always bear in mind. We read that pride leads to dis dis destruction. What does that mean? It means in some way pride is a precursor to your destruction. But pride here is paired together with arrogance because at any rate both are hand in glove. And our text says arrogance leads to downfall. So when we speak of uh, pride, we need also to be mindful of an attitude of arrogance. And then, of course, the text continues to say it is better to be humble, it is better to stay poor than to be one of the arrogant and get a share of uh, their loot. We'll come back and uh, describe uh, pride. But the second scripture that we read from Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 to 15, it's a, a scripture that gives us an example, a clear example of a stronghold that I want to refer to today as pride. In the text, we read about a morning star. Other versions would refer to this morning star as Lucifer. But when you read Isaiah chapter 14, particularly from verse 4 up to verse number 11, it is clear that uh, the context is the Babylonian Empire, particularly the one on top of that uh, kingdom. At the time, the Babylonian Empire had become so great it had brought down a number of uh, nations. But the second part, although it does refer to Babylon, the emperor in Babylon, but uh, it does have dual meaning because it tells about what brought this morning star's downfall about. Now I'm saying it must have dual 
metric meaning because although it refers also to the Babylonian uh, king, there are scriptures here that suggest that it refers to more than that. Let me just uh, mention one uh, or two. You see, when a reference is made to this particular one, one of the things that are said is that uh, this seems to be a celestial being, a celestial being that has fallen from heaven. So whilst we read about the king of Babylon, we must also bear in mind that we are also reading about the immediate God's judgment on that king who had been consumed with pride. But there is also an expectation that uh, this might also represent what will happen in future with the devil. So that's where the dual meaning comes from. But today it is not uh, a debate about whether it only refers to the Babylonian king and not at all to the Lucifer or the devil or its jewel. But today, whether this morning star is the Babylonian king only or whether it is the devil is immaterial for me. What matters most is what this morning star began to say to say in his heart remember we're talking about a stronghold that is set on our mindset and our interpretation of uh, the word heart here is that it refers to the mind it doesn't refer to that blood pumping organ so in other words we can also say this morning star said in his heart one i will ascend to the heavens secondly i will upgrade or raise my throne to be above the stars of god and number three I will sit enthroned on the Mount Assembly, on the utmost high of Mount Zaphon. And number four, I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. Number five, I will make myself like the most high. This is what this morning star this is what Lucifer said in his own mind. Five references to himself. And in all of these references, we see an inordinate ambition. An ambition not only to be equal to God, but to supersede the position of God. So now, this is an example of what we're talking about when we are talking about a stronghold in the mind. So now you will see from Isaiah 14 a clear progression of a stronghold. Just want to mention four levels. The first one is a thought. I want to believe that Lucifer, as 
he looked around and he saw the magnificent, magnificent creation of God. Then a thought jumped into his mind. This thought was not about giving praise to the Almighty God, but this thought was about superseding anything that God had done. So pride starts with a thought like all other strongholds. And then it goes to the second level where it becomes an emotional attachment. Although in the text, there's very little that points to emotional attachment. But in many instances, once the thought has been planted in our minds, then we become passionate about that. In our expressions, it becomes uh, easy to see that uh, this thought is not only resting in our minds, it is also manifesting in our, through our emotions as an emotional attachment. And of course, the third one, it would be action. You'll begin to act in line with this thought. I want to believe that Lucifer started doing all these things that he wanted to do in order to try and sort of uh, push off God and uh, be above everything that God had created. But it doesn't remain just an action. When it has been repeated over time, then it becomes a habit. And when it is a habit, then we are able to see that uh, now this is a stronghold. But let me quickly come to defining pride so that we journey together. See, one of the problems is that pride is also very close to good ambitions. So sometimes it doesn't come as raw pride, like we are reading in Isaiah 14. Sometimes it comes as one of uh, uh, those desires to achieve something in life. So it is therefore necessary for me to state that we can make a distinction between two kinds of uh, the spirit of pride. The first one is what would be acceptable, a feeling of pleasure, a feeling of satisfaction that you get because you or your team has have done something good. In other words, what you planned to achieve, you have achieved. In many instances, uh, you say, I'm proud of our achievement because it happened uh, within the record time. So there is nothing wrong about that kind of pride. But there is also pride that uh, becomes a stronghold. There is a pride that uh, precedes our destruction and it goes uh, together with arrogance leading us to our downfall. It is this pride which I would like to define as disproportionately large opinion of your importance or your superiority which is accompanied by arrogance 
accompanied by rudeness and accompanied by disrespectful behavior. Let me repeat again that definition. The unacceptable pride, the one that must be destroyed, is the one that I define as the disproportionately large opinion of your own importance, your superiority, which is accompanied by arrogance, rudeness, and disrespectful uh, behavior. It is this kind of uh, pride that uh, does not regard even other people as fellow human beings. It is this pride that tend to regard other people as of lower species than you. The Bible does make a distinction between pride that God hates and the pride that is acceptable, as I have just indicated. And I'm going to refer to a few scriptures now. When it comes to pride that God hates, it is the pride that we have referred to in our text, Proverbs 16, 18 to 19, because this is pride that leads to destruction. This is pride that leads to your downfall. But again, in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13, in the Good News translation, the Bible says, to honor the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance, evil ways and false words. Once again, God hates this pride that is accompanied by arrogance and even irreprehensible conduct. But the Bible recognizes the kind of pride that comes up because of a job that has been well done. I think in Galatians chapter 4, we read about such pride. In Galatians chapter, rather chapter 6, I'm sorry, Galatians chapter 6 and verse 4, in the Good News translation, the Bible says you should each judge your own conduct. If it is good, then you can be proud of what you yourself have done without having to compare it with uh, what someone else has done. So once again, the Bible is at peace with uh, this kind of uh, pride because of the work that has been uh, done very well or the kind of pride we express over achievement of our loved ones or those that we relate to. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 4, again in the Good News translation we read, I am so sure of you. I take such pride in you, in all your troubles. I'm still full of courage. I'm running over with uh, joy. So basically when we are talking about the stronghold of pride, we're talking about this kind of pride that comes from self-righteousness, that comes from conceit, and uh, that disrupts our relationship with God. This is a kind of uh, pride that we are talking about today. And it is important that you and I should be vigilant. You know, you're not going to meet somebody who will come to you and say, I'm a proud person. Of course, 
you may find somebody who says that because of a good achievement, but not this kind of pride that has become a stronghold. You and I must stay vigilant so that we do not allow the devil to begin to construct this stronghold in our thought patterns. But what would be the indicators that you and I should take care of? Firstly, the tendency to always put focus and attention on yourself. If you have a tendency to always, always focus on yourself and all attention is on yourself, as you have heard, Lucifer doesn't focus on any other person. Every time, repeatedly, he comes on to say, I, I, five times, I, I. Obviously, this is a clear indicator that um, pride is beginning to develop in your life. But secondly, when you struggle to empathize with the sorrows of other people, when other people are going through painful moments, such as bereavement, or maybe they didn't make it in their examinations, or they didn't make it in their job applications, and you struggle to empathize with their sorrows, uh, you always have a feeling, ah, I could have done that. Ah, I knew he would not do that. That is a second indicator. There is a stronghold of pride that is beginning to take hold in your life. Thirdly, when you feel self-pity, when people are not praising you, you know, sometimes we all reach certain achievements and uh, people somehow miss it. But uh, it shouldn't become an issue. But uh, when you begin to develop self-pity and then you begin to ask questions such as, why does everything bad happen to me, then you know pride may be getting a grip on you. You know, almost a similar thing happened to Elijah the prophet as he was running away from Queen Jezebel in First Kings 19 verse 10. These are the words that he said when he was talking to God. I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. So that's a problem here, is that Elijah seems to suggest that uh, is the only one that is really zealous, that is really serious about God. And now they want to kill him. Nobody says anything good about his attitude, his work. Obviously, God responded to him, you know, and God said, no, 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 no. You are not the only one. I do have other, many that have, also not disappointed me. But feeling self-pity when you are not praised is an indicator that uh, you are moving towards a stronghold of pride. Number four, it is when you constantly check what others think of you. Uh, when every time now and again you just want to know what is it that people think about you 
You don't even ask yourself, why should you be in the center of the thoughts of other people? I mean, people are also going about with their own businesses and with their own chores. Yes, when you begin to say, I want to know what people are thinking of me, and uh, it becomes worse when somebody tells you what some of the people that don't like you think about you. Again, self-pity. But this is an indicator. Number five. It is when you avoid people who are better than you when doing certain things. When you avoid people that excels, you know very well in comparison with them, they are much, much better than you and you avoid them. You just want to stay with people that are average like yourself or people that depend on you, that sing praises to you all the time. It might be an indication. See, Lucifer wanted such that uh, people would uh, sing praises always to him and if he dare to say is better than God. And then finally, when it is easier for you to find mistakes or flaws in other people, when every time you talk, you must talk about the flaws of other people. So when you allow this to happen, it might be a thought that has even moved beyond the realm of mindset to your emotions and you are beginning to even show it out through actions. When it becomes a real stronghold, this time it is when it is a real stronghold. Some of uh, the serious symptoms of a stronghold would be God is not concerned with what I do. God is not concerned. Sometimes you say this because you are not making it in life. We sp spoke about the second stronghold um, of uh, discouragement. We still talk about the stronghold of fear. Now you are afraid to do anything and uh, because you get so discouraged. And then you begin to say, God is not concerned with what I do. You are wrong. God is concerned. God takes note of each and everything that you do. But it becomes a stronghold once you pronounce it in your heart and to other people. Secondly, when you begin to say, I know what is best for me, better than God. Better than God. God wants to direct you to a particular situation. This happens particularly when God calls us into ministry. And then we think God is calling us into poverty. God is calling us into very difficult situations. Of course, we do this because of what we have seen, we have experienced. And then we begin to say, we know what is better. God doesn't know what is better. I know what is better for me, what is best for me, better than God. Then you do those things that will lead you to destruction. And worse still, the third symptom is when you begin to indulge in sinful habits and then you begin to develop this pride to say my sin 
is not that serious after all. My sin is not that serious after in comparison with other people who have done worse. This kind of sin is not so serious. When you begin to undermine the power of sin to disrupt your relationship with God, you are becoming proud. The other symptoms is when you say, my comfort is more important than others. Now, when you are proud, you don't think about others. It's all about you. And uh, you want to make sure you are secured and comfortable wherever you are. Even when God says, I want to use you as a channel of blessing to other people. You say, no, 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 no. I've got nothing to do with them. And when people come to you with genuine needs and needs that you know very well, you can meet, you can assist them, you look at your comfort first. When your comfort becomes more important than the pain of other people, you are sliding into dangerous and slippery roads of pride. When you begin to say, I am more deserving of grace than someone else, this happens in a situation when maybe somebody is praised or somebody has achieved something. Then you begin to say, I could have done it better. No, it's like the spectators that sit at the uh, stadium and watch the game. And when one or two players are struggling that day because it's not their day, they keep on shouting, I would have uh, got it through. I would have scored. I would have done that. Well, be careful. Be careful. The final one, this symptom, when you go around, you say to people, I am humble enough. I am humble enough. Leave the issue of humility to other people. Let them tell you. It's not for you to begin to say, I am humble. A certain William Law said, I quote, you can have no greater sign or confirmed pride than when you think you are humble enough. Close quote. Now I want to come to the conclusion. Now that we know the indicators, now that we know the serious symptoms, you and I have a duty to bring down the stronghold of pride. Come with me. Let's read James 4, verse 6 to 7 in the NIV. In James 4, 6 to 7, the Bible says, but it gives us more grace. That is why scripture says, God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. Firstly, what you need to know is that God always shows favor to the humble. If you want God's favor, 
You are not at an appropriate place if you are full of pride. But if humility defines you, then you are at a better place to be the recipient of God's favor. I'm saying to you, agree today that uh, pride <clears throat> is my precursor to destruction, arrogance, to my downfall. And I want to shift so that I am where I can receive God's favor. God's favor is on the humble. Secondly, in this particular text, it specifically says to us, we need to intentionally submit to God. Submitting to God means that you say, Lord, I will subject myself to your authority. I will subject myself to your word. I will subject myself to your will. For when you do that, it is not possible for Satan to even begin to build the stronghold of pride. And of course, in verse number seven, the second part, it says, resist the devil. Obviously, when you recognize that you need to shift, you need to come closer to the Lord, the devil will make offers and favors too. So the Bible says you need also to intentionally decide, I will resist the devil. I will resist him even if he comes through my friends. I will resist him even if he comes through my dreams. I will resist him even if he comes through good feelings. Resist the devil. But how do we resist the devil? Do we push him? Do we do all? No, 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 no. The text says we resist him by coming nearer and nearer or closer and closer to God. Because when you draw yourself closer to God, our text says God also draws closer to you. And when God is within close proximity with you, the devil will not take a chance. The devil will be put to flight. So we resist the devil by drawing closer or coming nearer to God. And finally, when we feel his presence, it says, humble yourself before the Lord. As I conclude, when the Bible says humble yourself, it's not only to say to the Lord, Lord, reign in my life. Be the ruler of my life. Be the Lord of my life. But there are times when you may not be in line with God's will. There are times when God may have to rein you in, may have to talk tough with you and tell you, you don't fear me, you don't do this thing. When God confronts you through his word, humble yourself. Remember that God's word is given to us for our good to teach us so that we know what God wants from us, but to also rebuke us when we go astray. You can't uh, uh, rebuke a proud person. When you tell a proud person that he's done something wrong, the question that he would pose, who are you to tell me that? But you and I, we need to humble ourselves before the Lord. So shift to where the favor of the Lord is. The favor of the Lord is with the humble.
Secondly, submit to God. Thirdly, resist the devil by coming nearer to God. And finally, humble yourself before God. May the Lord give you power to destroy the stronghold of pride. And may God give you wisdom to resist the devil from building one in your life.